Our next video is over another introductory concept of solving right triangles, which we will do a lot of in physics. So hopefully this is going to be a review for you from your geometry class. Alright, so first of all, this is a right triangle, and the reason that we know that is because this little box inside tells us that that is a 90 degree angle, which makes it a right triangle. Now that leaves the other two angles here unknown. In physics, we will use the Greek symbol theta, all right, to stand for angle. So we'll call this one theta 1, and we'll call this one theta 2. Sometimes you will see one of the angles uh, shown with the theta symbol. Let me just draw that for you and you'll see the other angle drawn with the alpha symbol. Okay, Both are acceptable. The next thing that we need to do is identify the sides. Okay, Obviously this one is the hypotenuse, it's the longest side of a right triangle. And then we have these other two sides uh, we can call A and B for right now. What we are going to do is learn how to name the triangle. And the way we name right triangles in physics is based off of our uh, thetas. Okay? So you have to decide which angle you're going to name the triangle for. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pick theta 1. All right? So since I'm picking theta 1, the hypotenuse is still going to be called the hypotenuse. But now this side A over here is no longer going to be called side A. It is the side opposite of theta 1. So it's going to be called side opposite. And side B here is no longer going to be called side B because in relation to angle theta 1, it's adjacent to it. So we're going to call that side adjacent. All right, and you hopefully should have seen this in your uh, geometry class. What we're now going to do is take a look at some trigonometric functions. All right, hopefully you know this phrase, SOHCAHTOA. If not, that's fine. We will talk about it in depth. All right, this means, I'll just take a look at this first one. This means that the sine of the angle theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. Alright, then we have this one that stands for the cosine of the angle theta is equal to side adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally, the last trigonometric function, we have the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in your calculator, whether you're using graphing or scientific, any time that you're going to use a trigonometric function, the mode of your calculator needs to be in degrees. So just to take a look at that, if you're on a graphing calculator, you would hit the mode button located next to the second button. And then over here, you'll see a zoom in of the screen. Uh, there should be a degree mode and a radian mode. By default, the graphing calculator is in radians, which we will talk about when we get into circular motion. But that's way later on in the course. Uh, so anytime you're going to use a trigonometric function, sine, cosine, tangent, or what I'm about to introduce in a second, the inverse sine, cosine, or tangent function, you must make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Okay. Uh, if you're on a scientific calculator, uh, then there will be a button that has a degree on it, and you'll need to make sure that that button is pressed and that the degree mode is listed in the viewer of your calculator. 
So what these trigonometric functions allow us to do is to create an equation where if you know two of the values of a triangle, then you can solve for the other value. For example, if you know what the uh, theta is and you know what the hypotenuse is, then you can solve for the length of the side opposite or you know any configuration of that equation. And so we're going to do a lot of practice with this and you'll hopefully get the hang of it pretty quickly. Um, I think that the first thing that you need to master is being able to name the triangle based off of whatever angle you have chosen. Remember that I chose theta 1 to name my triangle. I could have chosen theta 2. So if I had done that, let's rename the triangle based off of theta 2. Okay? So the thing that never changes is going to be our hypotenuse. Okay? And now since I'm using theta 2, this side would be called the side opposite. And this side would be adjacent to theta 2. Okay. So notice that the names of the sides changed based on which angle I'm talking about. So always make sure that you identify what angle you're talking about and that will help you name the triangle. And so I guess down here I really should go ahead and say that these are theta 1's. Alright, so here's a typical practice problem that you might encounter. You've got a triangle in which you know what the hypotenuse is and you know what one of the angles are. And you're being asked to find the other angle and what the other two sides are. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing I want you to do anytime that you're trying to solve a right triangle is write down Sokotoa. That is your first step until you, I tell you that you don't have to do it anymore. All right. Uh, now let's just pick a starting point, okay? I think the easiest thing to do is to solve for theta 2, all right? And that, does you don't even have to use the trigonometry to do that with. Um, you know, or you should know, that all interior angles of a triangle have to add up to be 180 degrees, okay? And you have two of the angles already, all right? So you've got... 180 degrees is equal to, we've got a 90 degree angle, we've got a 45 degree angle, and we've got theta 2. And we'd like to know what that equals. So, we're just going to solve this. When we add 90 and 45, we get 135, and then we still have theta 2. So we'll subtract 135 degrees from both sides. And we find out that theta 2 is equal to 45 degrees. Basic, simple algebra stuff. Okay, so the next step is to figure out what side A is. Okay, so this time we are going to use our trigonometric functions. So we just have to decide which one we want to do. And the only way you can do that is if you label your triangle. Okay? So the only angle that we didn't know was theta 2. It do that doesn't really matter. We could label it based off of a 45 degree angle, but let's just go ahead and use theta 2 this time. So um, what would side B be called in relation to theta 2? side opposite. Okay. And what would side A be called in relation to theta 2? The side adjacent. Very good. Alright, so since we're trying to find side A, okay, side A is the adjacent side, which means we have to pick one of the three trigonometric functions that involves adjacent. Well, there's two of them that involve adjacent. We've got the cosine and we've got the tangent. Both of those involve the side adjacent. 
we need to pick the one that we have information about. Okay. For example, if you pick the cosine function, you're going to have to know what the hypotenuse is. We're in luck. We do know what the hypotenuse is. If you pick the tangent function, you have to also know what the opposite side is. We do not know what the opposite side is, so you can't use tangent here. We have to use cosine. So let's write down what we know. We know that the cosine of theta 2 is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay and we want to solve for adjacent so we have to get it by itself the way you do that is by multiplying by the hypotenuse here here's how and since you do that to one side you must do that to the other side remember your basic algebra that you leave the thing that you are looking for alone don't touch it but you see what's happening to it right now it's being divided by the hypotenuse you have to undo that. The only way to undo division is through multiplication. So we multiply by the hypotenuse. And whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other side. So that's why we multiply by hypotenuse on both sides. Hopefully that's simple review for you. Alright, hypotenuse cancels out top and bottom. And we are left with the side adjacent is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta 2. Okay, so now we can just plug in our numbers. The side adjacent is equal to 5 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Now when we get an answer, we need to um, write it in the appropriate amount of significant digits. So how many significant digits should we use here? Good, two. For the degree, wait a second, I'm sorry, not two, one. For the um, sides, we have one significant digit. For the angles, we have two. So on theta 2, we have two sig figs, and for the sides, we need to show it with just one significant digit. So I come up with 3.5355, so on and so forth, meters. All right, the first significant digit is 3, but you have to look and see what the 5 does to it. Remember, the arcane rounding rule always rounds to the even number. So, the adjacent side is going to equal 4 meters. Okay. And remember, the adjacent side was side A. Okay? Now it's time to figure out what side B's length is. At this point, you have two options available to you. Since you know the length of the hypotenuse and you know the length of side A, you could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what side B is, or you could use another trigonometric function to figure out what side B is. They're both going to give you the same exact answer, so we're going to do both of them this time just to show you that it all works out. Uh, let's do the trigonometry one first so we can have some more practice doing that. Um, Alright, since we're trying to find out what side B is, uh, we look at and see that it's labeled opposite. So we have to use one of the three trigonometric functions that has opposite in it. That would be the sine function and the tangent function. Both of those have opposite in them. In order to use the sine function, you have to know what the hypotenuse is. In order to use the tangent function, you have to know what the adjacent side is. We know both of those now. My suggestion to you is to always use the one uh, that had a given piece of information to begin with. In other words, it wasn't something that you solved for. Uh, and the reason for that is, let's say that you chose to use this tangent one because you just figured out what the adjacent side is. If you made a mistake in your math um, when you were trying to figure out what the adjacent side is, 
then you are going to incorporate that mistake into another calculation and get a second answer wrong. But if you go back to something that you were given to begin with, you have a better chance of, of getting this one right, even if you got a previous one uh, wrong. So we're going to use the sine function this time. All right, so let's write down what we know. The sine of theta 2 is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Again, we are looking for the opposite, so we're going to multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. And then these cancel out. So we get that the side opposite is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of angle theta 2. So now let's plug in our numbers. Opposite is equal to 5 times the sine of 45 degrees. So the opposite side is equal to Again, we get 3.5355, blah, blah, blah. So with our significant digits, that becomes 4 meters. All right, now let's figure out what the uh, side B or the opposite side would be using the Pythagorean theorem. So we have, ooh. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember, c has to be the hypotenuse. So, a squared, we're not going to put 4 meters squared in there. You have to use the actual big long number that you get from your calculator, which is... Alright, so if we use the Pythagorean theorem, we've got side a, where we've used the entire number from the calculator, and we have to square that plus side B, that's the thing we don't know, and we're going to square that, equals side C, the hypotenuse, and we have to square that. So when we square this number, we get 12.5 meters squared, plus something we don't know squared, equals 25 meters squared. All right, that's the thing we're looking for, so we subtract 12.5 from both sides, and 25 minus 12.5 is 12.5 meters squared, which is equal to b squared. So, to get rid of a square, you take the square root. So, b equals the square root of 12.5 meters squared. And when you take the square root of 12.5, you get our beginning number again. Alright, so you're going to get the same exact answer whether you use Pythagorean theorem or whether you use your trigonometric functions. Again, because of significant digits, you would round this back to 4 meters. So the final answer then is that theta 2 is 45 degrees, side A is 4 meters, side B is 4 meters. And I think that's enough for this uh, lesson, so thank you for learning with me, and I'll see you next time.